Greetings, Souls Wind here, and welcome to Let's Play Gemcraft Frostborn Wrath. This episode W3 15 waves, 11 HP, orange, and blue. We'll talk about the gems in the game skills. Now it's five, and you can see here every five levels it does get a bonus advantage. So it is minus four percent mana pool milestone, which is lower mana pool milestone, but minus four percent lower. Negative, negative. Does it make it positive? Anyway, yes, it means that we have lesser requirements to reach the mana pool milestone. What does it mean? Let's take a look at it in the field. Five points. Let's go. Do we need to assign the points now? Not really. Should we? Why not? Makes things easier. So from the get-go, you see there's no towers. But we are given some gems, so the points here will be spent on towers. Before I talk about these statistics, let's take a look here. We have Iron Stash at 3 points, Brass Stash at 4 points, and Bronze 5 here. So Mana Pool is at level 1, next level is at 1152 mana. So there's a minus 4%, I think if we don't have the minus 4%, it is 1200 mana? 4% of uh, 1,002, yes, yeah, it's, it's 48, yes, indeed. So, it's 1,152 mana. What does the mana pool level do for us? It replenishes mana per minute, and therefore, at a higher level, it replenishes more mana per minute, and also mana stream kill multiplier. The multiplier from the mana stream skill that we had 5 points on. Also, Mana pool mana gain multiplier is 1, mana pool gem damage multiplier is 1. So it's going to level up and increase the multiplier. So what if we start with higher mana? It will calculate accordingly. So if we start with more than 1152 mana, then we are at level 2 and it starts off with the level 2 multipliers. Now. Let's have a look at these gems. The blue gem does a 22% slower for 3 seconds, and I don't think it does speed up. It just remains 22% slower for the entire 3 seconds, and then it just regains normal speed. Meanwhile, one of the most important gems right here is the orange gem. The orange gem leeches 0.54 mana per hit. It's like streaming shot, and every time it hits, it gets more mana, so it really increases mana by a lot if you use the mana beam on a pure orange gem. Okay, let's at least have a tower first. Here. We usually want to place towers along these edges so that it helps us deal with all of these monsters and whatnot. This is 9 to 16, this is 12 to 20 level 2. You can see that the blue gem does more damage than the orange gem. Of course the attributes are of a higher number because it's a level 2 gem, but you can still know the difference from here. The range is the same, but this also fires way faster than this at 1.49 compared to 1.28. Oh wait, hang on. This, the warm spell. In the previous episode, there was a story element about the warm spell. It felt warm and everything and we wanted to go and have a closer look. This is what it is and we can see a human figure here with seemingly blood traces coming out from this side. So there had been a fight here and I think this being is probably not alive. But the warm spell is still here. Also, when we drop gem bombs, there are gem wasps released from the bombs, and if we drop them here, in this case, three times more. They take on the attributes of the gem that you drop, so if the gem is a blue gem, it will produce slow wasps that will cast slow on the monsters that they attack. If it's a mana wasp, it does lower damage, obviously, but it also leeches mana. Right, let's go. Oh, not good. Okay, let's uh, add one more here. So when they go around, the gem has lots of opportunities to hit.
you can put it further from the edges because eventually you want the larger range to cover more areas so it is okay and we're gonna swap it because this does more damage so they rarely reach here but I want the mana to be obtained by the gem here so now instead of using the beam to clear swarmlings I'm just going to apply the beam so I get more mana and then it allows me to upgrade the gems, combine the gems and whatsoever. Okay, now before we go on, let's take a look at this. So, this is 12 to 21. 5.6 and 1.49. But if we were to produce a two-colored gem, you can see that it's 13.23 and 12.21. So, dual-colored gem does more damage than a pure-colored gem. But the sacrifice is that the specials are lower. So you can see 0.24 mana per hit and 13% slower. This is 0.54 mana per hit and 22% slower. So dual gem modifiers, 20% damage and 70% specials power. That's the modifier right now. And it's already applied and calculated. So what we see on the damage and what we see on the specials are reflective of what is in the gem modifier. Let me know if I'm wrong. And of course, oh, we can gem bomb this to return the gem for 252 mana and it costs 360 mana. So we get back 70% of the gem. So if you accidentally create a wrong gem, you can still return it. Or if the map happens to give you a gem that you don't want, you can return it for mana rather than to just keep it or forcefully use it and try to apply it in a suitable situation, you can decide to not use it. It's, uh, is it okay to leak? That's like 60 mana. That's like 60 mana. Okay, hang on. I can apply this for more mana and you can help me clean. Although I would have preferred to put you here, but by the time I put you here and you're done restocking. So there's a countdown. You can't just move gems around and expect them to fire straight away. Every time it upgrades, every time you move them around and whatnot, there is a countdown and you see the, the clock phase counting down. So be very careful when deciding to upgrade or move gems around. Oh, okay. You know what? I would rather you attack this one if possible. Oh, select a building. Sure. <laughs> Yep, if you specifically select anything, your gems will try to attack that thing if possible and disregard whatever setting you have. It will just try to attack whatever you have selected. So your selection takes priority. Always use beams for orange if you can because it does give you a lot more mana. And you see there's 0.7 seconds left on the gem and you see that I decided to upgrade it. So it does a countdown which is called a restock but it's okay because the remaining 0.7 seconds will give us even more mana. So even if a little bit were to leak, it's still worthwhile. I hope not a lot leak though. Also, casting an enhancement immediately restocks the gem, so that's a very important thing. So if we were to move it here, you can see that it immediately restocks. See? It doesn't have to wait for the countdown. And now I can move you over here to deal with the structure while I continue to work on these monsters. Okay, speed it up. Okay, when it snows, you can see the snowing. There's an achievement, but it's okay. When it snows, they have reduced speed. So you can take advantage of this to move gems around because they move slower. So your towers have a better chance of taking them out. And also not apply the beam right now because we don't need to apply the beam right now. We instead keep it for when the swarmlings are here. Okay, we can have more here, it's okay. Now the swarmlings are here, we can apply the beam 
cast it only on Swarmlings, let the Reaver go through and let it be dealt with by the blue gem over there. Unless everything's cleared, then it will change target because the beam does not have enough range to hit outside. Yes, this will be much slower simply because the armor here prevents anything below 26 damage to deal enough. So you see maximum 26 damage, so it's going to deal 1 damage per hit and that's not very good. So instead, we're going to bring this here. It does 37 damage. We can even combine this for level 3 and then combine this for level 4. And this will deal 75 damage maximum per hit which can help to take this down before the round comes to an end. But in this case, you notice that I combined a level 2 orange blue with a level 2 orange, so there's a higher percentage in orange. So it's like a 3 to 1 ratio, so there's more mana to slow. However, this 3 to 1 ratio is combined with a level 3 blue for a level 4 gem that has got more blue to orange. In this case, it becomes a 3 orange to 5 blue. So there will still be more blue component in this gem compared to the orange. And therefore, as compared to, let's say you see here it's a 22 0.4. If we were to have a level 2 orange blue leveled up to level 4, it will be different. So we can wait for the final wave to end and then we'll return this gem. Okay, 22 and 04 and then I'll return the gem as the final wave is about to end. Then I can show you the difference. Just remember it's 22 and 0.4. It is worth 2,000, so I cannot afford at the moment. Aha, uh -huh, it's about to overrun. Okay, we have the beam to restock, so let's go. Is it 22 and 0 0.4? Okay, put it back in here for the mana. Now, recreate this and level 4. Now you can see it's 19 and 0 0.46. This is how an equally distributed gem will level up to. Just now, it was a 5 to 4 ratio. So blue has got more component than orange and therefore it was a 22 to 0 0.4 instead of a 19 to 0 0.46. Maybe I can show again. This time round, we have more orange. So it's a 1 to 1. Now it's a 1 to 3. And this is now a uh, 5 to 3 in orange's favor. And in this case, we have a 0 0.56 to 17 instead of a 0 0.46 to a 19. Yeah. There. Okay, move this around. Can you kick them out? Oh, they tried to detour. Okay, anyways, we still got it out. I didn't get to show this one, but it's okay. I'll come back to the map statistics first. We unlock W4. And we have a story element. I think I found the cause of my thawing. A warm spell that's got out of control. Its creator, another wizard, who was possibly trying to flee and hide, just as I did, was killed here. I can see traces of a fierce fight. Does the council go after rogue wizards and hunt them down now. So it was indeed our fellow wizard. Hmm. Anyway, six points. So three from the iron stash and three from the field. Okay. Before we return to take a look at the gem wasps thing, 
Let's take a look at the skill again. It's 5 and therefore lower mana pool mount stones. And yep, the 20% is there. Anyways, let's go back. Okay. Let's see, we gem bomb this. You see a few gem wasps. I need to unpause the game. You see three gem wasps from a level 1 gem bomb. If you level 1 gem bomb here, you can see more. See? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Three times. So, your mouse pointer can lead them around, but it has to be closer. Then you can lead them over to the monster to attack. And they do quite a bit of damage to low level monsters. If we were to attack here, we can then tell that it is just divide by three. So jump bomb this thing. Okay, let's uh, bring them around. You see, it's still nine. However, these are much stronger gems and they do a lot more damage. There. Of course, you can gem bomb the monsters. It does damage and it still produces gem wasps. So I think it's like an exchange. So you gem bomb this thing and you sacrifice the raw damage, but you produce more wasps to deal with these monsters. And it lasts for a bit. It doesn't just disappear right away. Yeah, there. That's it. Now let's go back to the map. So you can see if it's a higher leveled gem, it still releases the same number of wasps, but they will be stronger wasps than the ones from a level 1 gem. We are done with W3. Thank you so much for watching. That's all I have for now. Have a nice day.